Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Monday Q&A, so let's get to that first question. Benefits of paw squats versus benefits of box squats as a raw lifter. Now for those who don't understand what raw lifters mean, that means no equipped suit. And a lot of you guys don't realize that a squat suit could add two, three hundred, maybe in some cases 400 pounds to your squat. Over what you can do with just straight up a belt and some shoes on. And they're a very, very different style of squatting. So a raw squatter means someone who's not using supportive gear. I'm going to recommend that you very much limit box squats. I'm not saying box squats don't have a place for strength athletes. Of other types, they do. They're amazing for equipped lifters. Absolutely amazing for equipped lifters. But for a raw lifter, the, the box squat is going to carry over very, very little to your normal squat because it has a different strength curve. It has a different bar path your body moves in a completely different pattern. So you're actually training a pattern differently than what your squat itself is gonna look like. I'm not saying it won't have some carryover, but it's gonna be very little. You would be better off just squatting more often. Now the actual pause squats are tremendously valuable. I would say for a raw lifter, again, after you get out of the novice phase, a lot of novices can just do touch and go with a stretch reflex and get better results early on, but eventually they're gonna start getting strong enough to where they can't move the weight fast enough out of the hole. And when you reach that point, that's when pause squats start to become very, very valuable. And so we go from one extreme to another. We've got a squat variation that's almost useless with very, very little carryover for the raw squatter to a variation that has 100% carryover. If you are particularly raw without knee wraps, the pause squat is going to really be one of your bread and butter exercises as a, a raw power lifter. It will work wonders for you. In fact, it will probably add more to your squat than your regular squats do, if, if you do it consistently enough. And it has to do with the fact that most raw squatters are weakest at the bottom, so they can train to be more powerful out of the hole when they go back to using the stretch reflex to allow them to use more weight due to that extra hamstring involvement, they're gonna be extremely powerful out of the bottom, and if you're powerful out of the bottom, you can lock it out. All right, next question. If bodybuilders are using insulin, how come type one diabetics, insulin users, weightlifters aren't big? Is being a type one diabetic in any way advantageous? Type one diabetic checking in, curious to know answers. This gets tricky to answer, and part of it is that for you, if you're drug-free outside of the insulin, no, you're probably not going to see a difference as a type 1 diabetic because you're just putting yourself back into the normal insulin range because you don't produce insulin. So when you eat food, you have to inject insulin. Now, a lot of people aren't aware of that. That's what a type 1 diabetic is. It's you're generally born that way. It's not because you lived a shitty lifestyle like type 2 diabetes is and you did it to yourself. Type 1 diabetics are pretty much set that way from birth and they end up at a relatively young age they have to start using insulin even if they're perfectly healthy and they're active and they eat a good diet they're still going to be type 1 diabetic no matter how they're raised and it's very unfortunate because this happens with children a lot of children have to start injecting insulin when they're seven and eight years old which really sucks because they didn't do anything but that being said no, it's not going to give you an advantage, but one of the reasons we realized that insulin was so anabolic was that early on when some bodybuilders who were on steroids who were type 1 diabetics, it was noted that they responded to the steroids a lot better. They responded to the steroids faster. And so that's back when people started really tinkering with insulin more when this was noted and some gurus noted this and then it became popular. But the thing you have to realize is that bodybuilders who are using insulin, and I do not like to talk about this topic because I think insulin is dangerous and I don't talk about it much for liability reasons. But most of your bodybuilders who are using insulin with their steroids, they're not putting themselves in a normal range of insulin because if you just wanted to produce a lot of insulin, you could just go eat a bunch of sugar. Problem solved. No, they're injecting more <laughs> insulin than the body produces and they're using fast carbs to make up for it so that they don't go hypoglycemic. And it is that supraphysiological level of artificial insulin put into their body combined with the supraphysiological levels of testosterone and the supraphysiological levels of growth hormone combined together to give that synergistic effect. And that's one of the reasons your current pro bodybuilders are so damn big. It's these things work in unison together, but if they were just using the insulin, they may not actually get uh, the anabolic response you're talking about. 
All right, next question. What type of insect will give me the most strength from my squat? And any of you who saw my how-to squat video know the reference to this because I got photobombed by, I think it was, it was a honeybee. He landed on my head and stayed there a few times during the video. But in my opinion, the best insect that you want to use to get the most gains out of your squats that you want to put on your head, you need to find the most alpha badass insect in the world. And I'm going to recommend that you put on your head a Japanese giant hornet, and I've got a picture here. These suckers are about that long, and when they sting people, they say that the wound feels like and looks like a red hot glowing nail stuck into you. It puts about a three inch deep hole in your flesh when those things sting you. And I saw a documentary once with these hornets to where 20 of them went in and killed like a, a nest of something like 2,000 wasps when they killed all of them by themselves without any of them being injured. And they just tore through it like it was nothing through that nest. So these things are extremely aggressive. They are badass. And if you want to bring up your squat, put one of those on your head. Just hope it doesn't sting you because the sting might actually go through the skull. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.